I love you. And I have a question for you. Will you be Christ? Are you willing to be Christ? Will Christ you suffer with not? Will Christ you just adore and worship not? Or reject not? Or, or will you really consider that the message that Jesus brought was not at all like Orthodox Christianity preaches, teaches, asserts its authority with, asserting that it has some kind of special authority. What if, what if the, <clears throat> pardon me, what if the message was about you? Your family, your people, <clears throat> the question, are you willing to be Christ? What does it cost? I suggest to you that it costs everything. The cost is very high. Because you give up what you are. You give up being you in separation. You give up your powerlessness. You give up your ego. You give up your selfishness. You give up your self-preservation. That's what you give up. You give up your time. You go help people. I suggest this is about leadership. Not servanthood. It is not about being a servant first and foremost. I disagree with that. I disagree with the way Christship is pronounced for the common people. I suggest that it's about leadership. First and foremost, you. You leading you to be in surrender to be the Christ, to be the real you, to be the son, to be the daughter of the Most High, and that you were never separate at all. And the message is about you coming back into being the real you. The real you, a Christ, not a Christian. They have fomented evil with what they have propagated. Because on the one hand, Christianity says, you can accept God, you can have this, you can have eternal life, you can experience peace and blessing and all this. Oh, by the way, give us 10%, you know, and we'll explain all these things to you because we have the authority to do so because we understand the book. You stay in your place, we'll stay in ours. That is not the message of Jesus. That is not your heritage, your lineage, or your future. It may have been your past that you bought into, that you were taught with, that you were taught of. Maybe you taught it. Oh, I did. I did. I bought into the whole Christian message, lock, stock, and barrel. I was raised in it, and I immersed myself in it. And there came a point that I asked myself, is, is this all there is? Church? 
this kind of structure. The preacher says, this is the kingdom of God. And sometimes says, oh, what a great service. The power of God, the presence of God. And only certain people are ordained. Only certain people can pass the cup. In some religions, only certain people can partake of the cup, the cup that acknowledges what? The crucifixion. I suggest the crucifixion and resurrection are all about the message of what we give up and what we get. That, that's simply it. What we give up is our life of separation. We crucify that which wants to think us. That which wants to use us to think others' thoughts. That's what we, we give up. That's what we crucify. And there's a cost to that. Because when you quit thinking other people's thoughts that want you to think their thoughts, their way along their lines of thinking, to come into their circle of influence and blessing, and they won't bless you otherwise, well, if you start thinking for yourself and considering the message and evaluating it and asking Jesus, asking God, source, universe, it doesn't matter your name for God, not a bit. Because God does not wear God's feelings on the sleeve. You can call God Ralph or Alice. You call it whatever you want. God's love is not offended easily. God's love is not fragile. God's love is everlasting and will never leave you or forsake you because you're it. You're the very expression of God. Want to see God? Go look in your mirror. Look at your kids, your parents, your family, your neighbors. We're all one. One force. One force of love. One force of love that does what? Loves each other. Will you, will you heal each other? Will you be Christ? You say you love someone? Don't you love everyone? Are you willing to love the down and out, the affluent, the celebrities, the paupers, those who stink, those who have no resources, who don't even know what they don't know? Do you know what you don't know? Do I? Do we? What have we been taught? What have we been satisfied with? Where has our creativity gone? I suggest this is the day of new beginnings. This is the birth of Christ in you, the common woman and the common man. This is the day of a new age. And it's not about approval of others or others approving you. It is about you coming into the sense, not of the accomplishment, not of the attainment, but the surrender to develop the heart of the Christ that you had in you all the time so that your heart of stone will not rule you. Will you be the Christ? Will you be the Christ? 
Will you let people be the Christ? Or will you fight it? Will you fight you being the Christ, saying you're not worthy? You're not this, that, or the other? Are you willing to be not separate from God, source, universe, the creator? Jesus, Jesus learned. to not be separate. How did he learn? He listened with his mind. I suggest whatever you call God, what God is, will teach you all things and surrender. If you are willing to be the son, the daughter, the majesty, the majestic, so that your identity is not replenished from the source of the world. Your identity is not established by religion anymore. Your, uh, your identity becomes established by the light that you speak, that you learn to receive from heaven above, from heaven in you, you being it, you carrying it around with you all the time, for the temple of the Most High is between your ears. It's what you think with, it's what your consciousness is, the power and glory of God. You can say, oh, well, I... I don't have any power. I can't do the miracles. I suggest to you the miracles that Jesus did. He learned how because he was taught. He surrendered. He listened. He asked questions. And he was taught directly from within. His inner voice, just like you and I, have an inner voice, and God will come and teach you all things. And as you learn and surrender to be the one you really are, you'll be becoming more Christ-like. You'll be becoming more Christ-like. You will be becoming Christ. You are the coming Christ, and the revelation of Christ is about you. The message of Christ is that you're it. The revelation of the son, the daughter, the offspring of God is that you're it. And there's no hierarchy that will keep you out of it. But there is a cost. T-I-M-E. It takes time to surrender, to learn to listen, to receive, to value the words that begin to come and flow within you. And you learn to value them and write them, assimilate them, and become them. You become the Word. You become the living Word. Fashioning you a new creation. My friend, I love you. So 15 minutes, I presented you a message, an offering, a bargain. What will it cost you? Your powerlessness your subservience, your control of others. This is a new day. The Christ is emerging in the common person. Men, women, and children of every race, every tribe, every tongue, every socioeconomic status, every religious label, 
every religious label, every religious label, because the labels will not defeat the love of God. So I love you, I bless you, I ask you to consider this day being Christ. I ask you to consider reading Jesus the Pattern, five booklets that I wrote that I offer Scott free on my website, theodorecottingham.com. I post videos like this all along. May even have some seminars again. I've had a number of them in the past. I've had 21 one-week-long conferences dealing with Jesus the Pattern some years ago. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's time to lead those again. Love you. Love the Christ. Be it. If you want more information, you know how to reach me. I love you and bless you. Theodore Cottingham, calling you to be the Christ this day. You emerge it. It emerges out of you with your face, your hands, your feet. Be the Christ this day. Thank you forevermore. Good day.